Hey guys, so I'm back with another video. So this is a very relevant video for the times. So as you guys all know, coronavirus is happening. It's real. A lot of myself, um, a lot of beauty professionals like myself and my colleagues are all kind of like reassessing what we need to do during this time. Some of us aren't taking clients right now. Or like everybody's going under like you know, social distancing. So it's a really good time to just cleanse everything, sanitize your kit, and just reevaluate your procedures. So I am a professional makeup artist um, for going on 13 years now. I also teach makeup to students at Industry Makeup Academy. And one of the biggest things we teach is sanitation and hygiene. So these are things I was already doing, but I hopefully can share stuff with you, which maybe you haven't um, adopted into your practices and it will help you. So I actually already went through all my kit and I just went through and I decluttered, I threw some things out. Um, you know, part of being sanitary is throwing away items regularly. There are expiration dates with makeup. Um, with makeup artists, kit supplies things do last a little longer because we are keeping them sanitary but everything has an expiration date the rule of thumb is if it starts to smell um look different or um it's over uh, about a year old with powders and liquids you throw them out um with other things like mascara three months you know it's time to toss it so go through your kit and real and think about how long has it been in there is it time to throw it out if you're not sure if you don't remember you can always put a date on your your bottle I've, i do that with mascara all the time i just put a label maker of when i opened it so there's a difference between an expiration date and then period after opening so sometimes it just it will last longer until you open it so just pay attention to that kind of stuff and clear out your kit now while you have the time so the first thing i have here is rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol so basically this is what you use to sanitize almost everything in your kit um, you need 70 percent alcohol which means 30 percent water years ago i thought the more alcohol the better like the higher concentration like the 90s and above was better but i actually looked it up on the cdc website years ago and found that you need 70 percent because it has to have enough water where it stays on the product long enough to sanitize it the 90 percent and above immediately evaporate so it doesn't kill the bacteria that you're trying to sanitize so you need 70 percent alcohol if you do have 91 um, percent and up you can um in the meantime just take distilled water and put um 30 percent water and then the non and then 70 percent of the 90 per, um, percent concentration into a little spray bottle but um the 70 percent is pretty widely available you can get it at most stores it's actually harder to find like the 99 percent um usually that's for special effects makeup and you have to get it from like a specialty makeup store so i have this I also have my brush cleaner spray. So this is actually um, Perion Spirit in a Cinema Secrets bottle. Um, I love Cinema Secrets and Perion Spirit, my two favorite professional brush cleaners. They sanitize and they dry quickly and you have to be very conscious of cleaning your brushes in between clients, like if you have back-to-back -back clients like a wedding. So you have this combined with paper towels. So you just basically spray the paper towel and just run your brush onto it until it's clear. You can spray alcohol onto your synthetic brushes to sanitize them, but if you spray alcohol too much on your natural bristle brushes, it will break the hair over time because it will dry out the natural hair. I also have Beauty So Clean Sanitizing Spray. So this is an amazing invention for me. Um, back in the day, you had to wipe off all of your powder products to sanitize them because if you spray alcohol on powder, it ruins the surface. It gets like dry and cakey and it just doesn't work as well. But this will sanitize not only powder, but everything. So you just spray it on and it dries in a couple of seconds and you're good to go. So what I'll do is I'll just spray all my palettes, um, especially the dry ones. And then I know I'm safe and then I'll spray them again to, to sanitize them. So back in the day, like I said, you had to literally wipe off the top layer, which I'll get into when we talk about the different powders. So this is worth the money. And it's called Beauty So Clean Cosmetic Sanitizer Mist. You can buy this at professional makeup stores. So I have Clorox wipes. So I use this to clean my kit periodically, like I clean the containers. I use it to clean the brush handles. So your kit needs a wipe down and a deep clean 
um, you know, on a regular basis because things spill. Um, you want to just wipe everything down. Um, and it's especially right now, I'm glad I had so many of these because these are hard to find. So I have here some different palettes. Steel palettes are what you use to mix products onto. This is from a company called Dublot Beauty. I don't know if it's still around, but I love it because you can just put it on top of your hand. Um, some makeup bars do use the back of their hand and mix products on, but you have to make sure to clean the top of your hand with um, soap and water and hand sanitizer. So sometimes it's just easier to just use this. Um, and this wipes clean. Um, it doesn't absorb product like some plastic palettes do, so that's why I like the steel. The other option that that same company has are these little paper palettes. So you can literally, it's like wax paper and you just peel it off and throw it away. So that's very convenient. You don't even have to worry about wiping it clean. But if you are cleaning your metal palettes or your, um, your stainless steel palettes, you just spray it with alcohol and wipe it off with like a paper towel or a wet wipe. You definitely need your hand sanitizer. So um, you buy the small little bottle and then the big bottle and refill it as well. So um, it's best to wash your hands for 20 seconds, top, bottom, middle, tips of the fingers, um, and as well as having this. Um, but definitely use this um, in between clients. If you can't wash your hands, it's totally necessary. Make sure your clients see you do it so they have confidence that you're clean. I have some disposables, so I wanted to point this out because the Beauty Blender for the last couple of years has been kind of controversial. People say you can't truly clean one of these, so a lot of people, um, they actually just have a dedicated Beauty Blender for their client. Let's say you have like a regular client or you're doing TV and film, you can have one for each of them, or you could just use the old school wedge sponges. So these are Alcone um, wedge sponges. These are amazing. They're better than like the random ones at, at the drugstore because they're thick and fluffy and you can also wet them and they give almost the same size as a beauty blender. So especially right now, I would definitely not use a beauty blender in your kit. On yourself, it's fine, but um, in your kit, these are good to go. I also have these little wedge, um, not wedge, these are powder puffs. The little, they're small, you stick them on your pinky. So you never really have to touch your client's face. You can just rest your pinky with the wedge sponge just to kind of get balance. Um, and you can use your brushes and sponges and Q-tips. You never really have to touch someone's face with their hands. I also have here a sample of brush cleaning soap. I have a lot of these for my makeup school. But when you wash your brushes and you shampoo them, you have to make sure that the soap has an antibacterial agent in it. Some people are using like regular baby shampoo. Yes, that will take off the makeup, but it will not sanitize the brush. So sometimes it's just worth getting um, brush um, makeup brush cleansing soaps. Like Beauty Blender has it. A lot of companies are selling it now. Um, you can also, again, use um, the alcohol and spray your brushes after. I love using tea tree oil soap because tea tree is a natural disinfectant. Um, I use the one by Dr. Bonner's. Um, it's like an orange um, liquid bottle. So those are kind of some of the things that you should definitely have already in your kit. So now we're gonna go through each of my Zuka bags. I have them divided by section and I'm gonna show you how to sanitize and clean them. So the first thing I'm gonna pull out before that though is my brushes. So. I carry my brushes in a brush belt like this, as well as I just got, I used to have um, the Cosetti um, canisters to hold my dirty brushes. So I'll keep my clean brushes on my body and when they're dirty, I'll put them in the cup. But I recently bought this one, which is very convenient too because it sits straight and it zippers close. So that way I can close this up when I'm ready to um, leave and my dirty brushes are contained. Before that, I would um, sometimes just throw the dirty brushes in a bag. So my thing with brushes is that the container also has to be clean. So when it comes to these leather, this isn't real leather, but it's like um, fake leather. When it comes to the makeup getting on these, you can't just wipe them away. You need something oily to remove the makeup stain. So you can use um, um, an olive oil, um, spray, brush cleaner spray that has like oil in it like Perion Spirit. But that's what actually gets the makeup residue off and then you can use like a sanitizing wipe like a wet wipe or um, a Clorox wipe. But your brush container has to be clean too in order for your brushes to be clean. And plus you always want your kit to look clean to your client. Get rid of any makeup spills or anything like that. So clean that as well as your brushes. So when it comes to cleaning brushes, you wanna clean the bristles as well as the ferrule and the handle. So I use my brush cleaning spray in between clients and then after a gig, I always shampoo my brushes at the end of the day. 
um, or between like the different day appointments because you don't want to just use a quick cleaning brush spray all the time. You, you need to deep clean shampoo your brushes. So let's say I have a gig on Friday. The brushes will be sh freshly shampooed. If it's multiple clients on that day, I'll use the spray. And then after that day is done, I will shampoo them. And then if I have a, a, another gig the next day, I have to make sure that they're dry or ready to go or I have another set that is shampooed clean. I just have a ton of brushes. Um, you need at least two sets of brushes for a makeup artist so that way you don't, you don't have to be cleaning them all the time. But keep that in mind with your brushes. Deep clean them in between gigs and spray them in between clients. If it's your personal brushes, you know, I would say at least shampoo them once a month um, and spray them at your discretion. But if you're dealing with clients, you definitely have to do it on a regular basis. So this is my skincare bag right here. So this is where I keep my, um, usually I keep my alcohol, my sanitizer, and my cleaning sprays. So when you clean out your kit, just go ahead and dump everything out and, and wipe your container clean. So I would literally wipe down the inside of the Zuka bag. Um, it's got a plastic lining so it's easy to clean. And then one by one, I would literally go ahead with my um, either my alcohol spray and a, and, and a paper towel or a Clorox wipe and wipe everything down. If there's makeup or spills, just clean that away. Um, the best things to have in your kit are little tube squeezy things. So that way you're never having um, an open container where someone could touch it or things could get in it. You just put this on your palette and you're good to go. When you have things like this, where it's like an open jar, Sometimes like the risk would be that you might double dip in here and it can infect the whole thing. Like if you go to Sephora, you know how like the testers are like, oh heck no. If unless it, it, unless it has a pump, I'm just not even gonna touch it because it's just breeding bacteria. So just be careful with that. Keep that in mind that you, you know, the squeezy bottles are better. You can even transfer things into smaller bottles like this where you just squeeze it out. Um, I also have in here Q-tips. I have tissues and I have like a, mi a mini Beauty So Clean sanitizing spray in here as well. Yeah, that's pretty much it for skincare. Wipe everything down, squeezy tubes are best. Um, and have all your cleaning supplies in one space. So all of those ones I mentioned earlier will go in here. So let's move on to eyes, okay? So this is all my eyeshadows, eye pencils. So let's go through how to sanitize and clean it. So. Inside here I have all my mascaras and brow gels. So you definitely want tons of spoolies. These are mascara spoolies or brow spoolies. You never double dip. So let's say you have to put um, mascara on two eyes. You can use two or more spoolies because you never want to double dip. What I tell my students is if you m think you might have the temptation to double dip um, or use a brush that came with it, just cut off the wand with a good pair of scissors so that way you'll never have the temptation to use the one in the wand. So literally just cut this off and you have to use the disposable spoolies. They even sell mascaras now that just have the cap and the brush separate. I like those as well. So when it comes to brow pencils, a lot of them are retractable. So here's one. So how you would sanitize this is you would spray it with alcohol, the 70%, wipe it off with a paper towel. And I actually like to run it on all sides just to remove the outer layer. You cannot sharpen these, so that's the best way to sanitize these. Try not to use the spoolie that comes with the brush um, with this unless you clean this regularly. Just use a disposable one as well. So here we have a whole bunch of eye pencils. So eye pencils, to sanitize these, what you're gonna do is sharpen it first and then spray it with alcohol and then wipe it off. You wanna sharpen it first to remove the outer layer, but because the sharpener is dirty, you spray it after the fact, okay? So when it comes to um, eyeliners, I either have the pencil, but if I want like a wing or a very precise liner effect, I do not use liquid liners on my kit anymore. The pens, you cannot sanitize them. The like the felt tip liner pens, even I see a lot of makeup artists use them. I'm like, what? Because if you spray it with alcohol, it ruins it and it's just, a, it's never the same again. So you need gel liners in your kit if you're trying to get that, that look. You just scoop out, the, scoop this out, put it on your palette, and then you can just go from the palette. Um, I like to keep these closed if I'm not using them or flip them over. I even like to store them in a Ziploc bag to make sure they don't dry out. 
Um, inside here, I also have some more disposable options. I have, these are actually liquid liner pens, so, or disposable applicators. So um, if you like that um, felt tip um, point of the liquid liner pens, they also sell these and you can just dip this into the gel liner. Now, when it comes to your eyeshadows, so technically, because they're powders, bacteria just sits on the top layer. It doesn't sink below. So you can put your brush directly onto the powder on the face back, but you have to sanitize it between clients. So you can use your Beauty So Clean Sanitizing Mist, which is super easy. If you don't do that, you have to take a tissue or paper towel and literally wipe off the top of the powder. That gets very tedious, so occasionally I'll do that, but between clients, I'll use this and it's much easier. What you can also do is you can take a clean spoolie and basically if you wanna let someone use some of the eyeshadow instead of letting them borrow it and let them do who knows what, take the spoolie and just shave a little bit off on a tissue and give it to them. So maybe it's a, a friend who wants to borrow your eyeshadow or another makeup artist who wants to use a certain color. Just take a spoolie shave a couple of off on a tissue, hand it to them, or take one of these wedge sponges and rub it really good in there and it gets a couple layers of the powder product on there and they can literally dip their eyeshadow brush in it and get a good amount of product. So that's how you are able to share makeup without like sharing it. All right, so that's pretty much it for the eyes. So powder products, you know now how to sanitize them. Okay, so let's move on to foundation. So, what, the same thing comes with foundations. Um, I like to depot my foundations into little um, containers like these. I bought these on Amazon, and basically you just squeeze it onto your palette so you're never gonna dip inside it or touch it. Um, and they're, they don't take up a lot of room and they don't spill. These Dennis and Myricks foundations are small and I like how they're squeezy tube as well. When it comes to cream products like this, this is a Ben Nye white color. You see I have little scrape marks in here. I never touch the pan with um, a brush. I scoop it out with my stainless steel spatula and put it on the palette, and that way I don't double dip. Because if you touch a brush, even though if it's clean, you touch a brush here to the client's face and back here, the bacteria from the face will get inside this wet product and because the whole thing is wet, the whole thing will breed bacteria and then it becomes infected. You can't just wipe off the top layer of, of the product because the bacteria has touched the whole thing. So you have to be really conscious about that. So when it comes to cream products, you gotta scoop it onto your stainless steel spatula and then you can just double dip from the palette, not from the actual wet um, container. So you, here is another palette. So you'll see I have tons of little scrapey marks. Um, that's how I know I've been clean. If it looks too smooth or there's um, makeup like on the edges, like that means you've been dipping your brush and wiping it, that's when I know that you're not being sanitary. So occasionally what you wanna do is come in with your alcohol and you spray the, this. Because it's wet already, the alcohol will not ruin the product. Um, and you can save the sanitizing spray for your powders because it's more expensive, it's like way more expensive. So spray it with alcohol and then just take a tissue and just make sure you kind of wipe the product off the edges. Just you want to keep the, the palette sanitary and looking clean as well because nobody wants like a dirty looking palette. All right, so let's go to powders. So the same thing applies with face powders. So here are my blushes. So I would use my sanitizing mist on here or you would have to wipe off the top layer of product. It's a little bit easier with a blush because they're bigger, but eyeshadows with all those little pans, that's a pain in the butt. Here's something else I wanna mention. If you have loose powders, what you need to do is take the powder and, and either scoop out or tap powder onto a paper towel or tissue, and then you dip the brush into the tissue and onto the client's face. You don't want to take a um, your brush and dip it right into here or into the cap because then you're pretty much like getting the bacteria from the face into the loose powder and because it's loose it's not like you can just wipe off the top layer so shake it onto a tissue or paper towel and then work from there so all of my powders you know how to sanitize those okay so then let's talk about lips so we know how to sanitize our lip pencils for our lip pencils we just Take it out, 
sharpen and then spray and then wipe off the alcohol. You wanna make sure to wipe the alcohol because it might burn the client's skin if there's a little bit of residue on there. I put a sharpener anywhere I have pencils. So um, get you a good sharpener that's not gonna eat the whole pencil. Um, I actually love MAC pencil sharpeners. They're really good. Um, the cheap ones are not worth saving like those couple of bucks. It's just gonna eat your product. So when it comes to glosses like this, I prefer squeezy tubes, like I mentioned before. Um, you just know that you can just squeeze it out without having to worry about um, double dipping. But if you do have a, um, one of these with a doe foot applicator or a lip gloss one, they do sell disposable lip gloss applicators and lipstick applicators. Or what you could do is take this and just roll it onto your steel spatula and then you can just use a lip brush or a lipstick disposable lip wand and then you can go right from here. So you cannot share this like from your personal to your pro kit because if it touched your lips once and you put it back in, it's pretty much like contaminated. I also have a lipstick and palettes too. Um, I love these Viseart palettes, they're amazing. Or you can make your own. Take the tube of lipstick cut it off with your spatula and just press it into here. I've seen some people melt them, but it's really not necessary because it, it might change the consistency and it, this looks fine. I do not recommend taking a tube of lipstick and applying it directly to the lips. Um, you can sanitize lipstick, but it just takes too long. You have to hold in the alcohol, take off the outer layer, of, scrape off the outer layer, and it's just too much. So just go ahead and depot them and scoop it out with your spatula, put it on the steel palette and go. Or buy um, lipstick palettes that are pre-made. So here are some lip brushes, disposable lip brushes and um, five gram jars. So as you can see, um, these are just minis. I give these to my clients as a touch-up product um, or you can use them on your kit. Some people will use um, Q-tips to apply lip products. The ones that are like professional grade that are tightly wound, you can also use that on the lips. Okay, so the last thing that I'm gonna talk about is lashes. So I have all my false lashes in here. So when it comes to lashes, a couple of things. I have my lashes in this little um, view set container. So the key when it comes to lashes that you have to pay attention to is if you're Applying glue to your lash, obviously you do not want to blow on it. You're not blowing on um, brushes either. So let's say you have powder on a brush, you never blow. You don't blow on eyeshadow palettes, you don't blow on anything. If you have excess powder on the brush, you tap it off. If you're waiting for the lash glue to dry, because you have to wait 20 seconds for it to get tacky and then apply, you just set it aside, let it go, or you fan it, or you let your client blow on their own lash. So please keep that in mind. Something else we need to talk about is nails. <laughs> Everybody loves some cute longer nails, but technically they're just not the most sanitary things. They're hard to clean. My nails just stay short. Um, I, I can clean them and not worry about product getting underneath the nail. So I know it's hard for, here, for people to hear, but technically you can have clean nails, but it's easier to have short nails. So in general, just keep everything looking clean. Um, keep your makeup kit looking clean, the outside bags, all the products, wipe them down, and sanitize and clean them out regularly. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. I know that was a lot of information, but after doing these things a couple times, it just becomes natural behavior, and you'll feel more confident knowing that you're clean and your client will too. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to check out my blog, makeupbyrunrun.com, and until next time, I hope you guys have a great night. Ciao, Bellas.